This is a very quick, or hopefully a very quick, uh, how to mount and dismount a penny farthing. The, audience, the intended audience for this video is somebody interested in uh, riding penny farthings, uh, but doesn't have any experience and is just trying to figure out what it's all about. Um, and you can't ride a penny farthing until you can get on off a penny farthing. So we'll start at the start. Um, start with my dress. I have lace-up exercise shoes. I'm not wearing flip-flops, okay? Wear shoes that have some sort of sole with grip on it that'll stay fastened to your feet. If you try to do this with flip-flops or flimsy footwear that can come off, and you have to mount a dismount barefoot, oh, it's gonna be painful and it's gonna be messy. Don't do it. Um, I'm wearing shorts. Um, you need some agility in your legs to swing your leg over the saddle. If you're wearing uh, cumbersome blue jeans or tight blue jeans, like baggy blue jeans or very tight blue jeans, you're going to find that's going to create a certain amount of awkwardness when you're trying to get on top of the, the bike while it's moving. So um, I would suggest shorts. Uh, why am I wearing a 1970s Lycra Macho Man uh, shirt? Uh, because I got caught out wearing a sweatshirt once. Um, I was going to dismount the sweatshirt caught on the nose of the saddle, and yeah, you got it almost one ass over the tea kettle. Um, I just caught that just as it was about to happen. So if you can ideally wear, uh, not wear baggy clothes that can catch on parts of the bike, that's ideal. If you're all gonna wear a jacket, I would suggest uh, wear it in open condition so its ability to catch on things is, is much reduced. Right, um, I've got a, a waist pouch for a phone. Uh, don't know if you get in any trouble while you're learning with your penny farthing, so maybe you might want to have a phone with you in case you get into a difficulty. Um, glasses. I wear sunglasses um, in the daytime to keep the bugs out of my eyes, and when I ride a penny farthing at night, which I don't suggest you do, I can do that in my area because it's extremely quiet and there's almost nobody on the roads. You know, in an hour I might see two cars. Um, when I go out, um, but I'll wear clear safety wraparound uh, safety glasses at night um, to keep anything out of my eyes while I'm riding at night. So, um, move on to the helmet. Uh, this is a hard helmet. You see in a lot of videos where people are wearing top hats and bowlers and boaters. Um, although it looks very nice, period costume, suitable for a penny farthing rider, it offers no, uh, no head protection. Were you to go over on the penny farthing with one of those hats, you, yeah, you could uh, seriously injure yourself. Get a hard helmet. This one has um, Bluetooth signals incorporated right into the design. So I have a Bluetooth button on the uh, handlebars. I can um, alert following vehicles uh, to my attention to turn left and right. Uh, clearly, this does offers no utility drawing up on a junction because the car is in front of you, you can't see the back of your helmet. So you, you're still required to um, use hand signals. Um, but if you're going to buy a lid for your penny farthing, you, you might as well get one with the uh, signals. It's not a bad little, uh, little safety device. I've also put some reflective tape on it to make sure whatever angle, you know, when I'm uh, riding it at nighttime, get a little bit of extra ref reflection on it. I've also got a reflective bit of tape on the back of the penny farthing too for nighttime um, as well. And this flashes at night, so following motorists can see you because the, the helmet flashes. When it's not turning, it, or when it's, you're not indicating left to right, it will periodically flash. So that's uh, another good thing. Okay, right, let's move on to um, some more particulars. Right, okay, so we've got a 50 inch penny farthing here. Why 50 inches? Because I'm all of a whopping 5 foot 9 inches. Um, this is sized for me. Um, if you're a taller person, maybe you go for a 52 or a 54 inch. Um, because for me, if it was a 54 inch, my short legs would have difficulty reaching the cranks, okay? So if you're interested in buying a penny farthing, um, do be aware that they, the, the high wheel come in different sizes and you need to know kind of what's suitable for your height. Okay, right, so that's that. So there's no brakes on a penny farthing. This is a UDC Mark III penny farthing. 
There's no brakes on it, there's no brakes on antique penny farthings, and there's no brakes on most replica penny farthings. UDC's come out with a Mark IV that actually ships with a brake. But the odds are, the person watching this video, I guess might be expected to have a penny farthing with no brakes, which is kind of the normal condition for penny farthings. So it's at that level um, I'm gearing this, this kind of video with an emphasis on safety. So we have a bike with no brakes. What does that tell us about how, how we are going to mount and dismount? It tells us we need um, a safe bit of level ground. This is the situation. The only way you can moderate the speed of the penny farthing is with those pedals. And when your feet are not on those pedals, you cannot moderate the speed of it. So we're in a so if we are in a decline and we're mounting, okay, so now we're going downhill, okay, we push off and we're trying to get sat on the saddle. Now this is going faster and faster because we're going downhill pedals spinning faster and faster, okay? You don't have effective control until you plant those, plant both feet on those pedals and you can apply negative resistance to slow its forward motion. So um, you do not want to be mounting on declines. It's going to make it harder for you. So you want safe, bit of level ground where you can see approaching traffic. You're not going to be surprised by a car or a car door being flung open at a point you've not successfully gained control of the penny farthing. Equally, same thing is true stopping. You, you need to really plan your stops. If you are going downhill at an intersection um, and you need to, to break suddenly, well, what do you have to do? In order to break, you need to take your feet off the pedals to, to put them on those mount pegs. And so now, you have no ability to moderate the speed. The speed is going to pick up faster and faster. You're going to go straight into the intersection, um, probably before you can get down off the penny farthing. So um, both mounting and dismounting, um, you really need to plan. That has to be a planned activity. It can't be done spontaneously. Well, you, you, you can do it spontaneously, but if you're having to respond to things without planning, we're probably not driving defensively enough, okay? Um, so you um, need some safe ground to work with. I have a big driveway. I can fit about five cars in my driveway, and it's got a longish bit that goes out to the main road. So I can get my penny farthing, go, penny farthing going, and I can mount it, successfully gain, gain control of it before I enter the road. If you don't have such a fortunate situation to have a biggish driveway as a, as a penny farthing one way, I suggest you find a big empty parking lot or um, you know maybe um, a park where you know hopefully there's not unleashed dogs and children running around that are going to interfere with you. But if you can find some some area of a park maybe that would um, you know solve the problem of having cars approaching you while you're gaining control of the penny farthing, right? So there's some practical considerations before we've even, even talked about how we mount. Okay, so we've talked about suitable dress and we've talked about the kind of environment that, that we require to safely mount the penny farthing. Let's talk about the mechanics of actually mounting the penny farthing. Okay, but on my UDC penny farthing, which by the way is a very good penny farthing, thank you unicycle.com selling me this. I'm extremely happy with it. Thank you, Roger. Um, two sets of steps here. I'm going to call this one, closer to the small wheel, the push-off step. And this, these two up here, I'm going to call that the uh, mount steps. Now, on mine, it's there's only one push-off step. It's on this side. But with an Allen key, I could flip it around, turn it on the other side. So, um, depending on whether you're lefty or righty or how well you feel comfortable, this can be on either side. But for this demonstration, it's there because that's how I'm comfortable. Now, you can't climb on a penny farthing while it's static. You will fall over. It's, it's unbalanced. So, the only way 
we are going to get uh, sufficient stability to get on this thing is it has to have a little forward momentum. A little, we, we need to attain escape velocity, right? So the push-off step, what we do is we we keep the handlebars in a level at it, level and straight attitude, and we have one foot on the push-off step, and we use this trailing foot to hop along, and then so we get it rolling, right? Once we feel like we've got sufficient speed, we don't want it going like a house on fire where we're going to struggle to get our feet on those pedals. Nor do we want it going so slow it's almost stopped because you really now you got something that's that's just upright. It's not moving and it, it could tip over. So once we get sufficient speed, okay, we're gonna straighten this leg, and then this leg is gonna now be off the ground. Now, keeping the handlebars level, um, we do not don't do this when you're trying to mount. You're gonna have problems. Um, we are going to straighten this leg, so this leg is now up in the air. Then we're going to bring the foot that was pushing along, and we're going to bring that up on this, uh, on, on the opposite side of the bounce step. And now we're going to straighten this leg out. So now all our weight is borne on this leg, and we're still holding on to the handlebars. Now this this foot that was on the push-off step. That is going to be clear now, because we're, we're, we're safely positioned on, on the mount step up here. So this foot is now clear to be swung around, okay? Once you um, get the leg over the saddle, your next goal is to gain control of the pedals quickly. And again, you're doing this while keeping the handlebars um, absolutely straight. If you uh, if the handlebars start moving around while you're trying to get onto it, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna have an epic fail. Um, another thing about epic fails, do not um, try to save a bad mount. If you think, if you just know this ain't gonna work, it's not happening, abort, okay, back out of it and make, make a clean run. Don't try to salvage a, a bad mount because the odds are pretty good. It'll fail anyway, and you can hurt yourself. Uh, let's talk a little bit about falling. You might feel, you know, inclined to throw your arm out. I can tell you, throwing your arm out, falling. Uh, I'm a skydiver. I'm a base jumper. Um, I do all sorts of silly things. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, throwing an arm out, you. You're going to dislocate your shoulder probably at a minimum. Um, you could break your elbow, you could break your wrist and or hand and fingers in your hand. Um, I would suggest if you have to fall, make sure you, again, you've got a hard, hard hat on. Um, don't reach. Um, I would try to keep my head from striking the ground first and try to present the, the shoulder, resist the temptation to throw an arm out. Um, that's going to do. That's going to do some damage. Also, keep your mouth closed. Like if you're fighting, if you're fighting, you know, keep your mouth open because you get your teeth knocked out. So, um, if you're falling, anytime you're falling, try to remember to keep your your mouth closed. Right? Don't mean to scare you. I'm just talking about some very practical things. You'll find within a few hours of practice, you will nail this. You will probably nail this, and you'll think, oh, yeah, I don't know why I was so worried about this. Um, it'll come naturally and it'll be fine, but it's at that stage of learning where you just you're uncertain. Uh, that's that's it's in that little gap exists a window for you to get injured, and that's why I'm doing this video. Uh, I'd like you to have a good time, enjoy the penny falling, um, and I'd like you to get over this little rough spot so you can get to that point where you can get on it safely. You can ride a penny falling, and it's great exercise and fun. You can enjoy it. Um, but there is this, this window here where you're more likely to suffer an injury until you gain those skills, right? So let's next move on to actually uh, doing mounts and dismounts. Okay. So this foot on the push-off step, by the way, it doesn't have to be on this side. You can put it around the other side. I'm just used to this foot. So this foot over here, 
Okay. Gonna keep the handlebars straight, hop with this leg. Once we get going, this leg will eventually end up here. The foot that's pushing will end up here. We'll bring our weight up there. And then once we're fully stood on this one, the leg that was down there, that goes up the seat. back on the seat, step down and push up, step off. Again, handlebars straight, hop, hop. Bring our weight up here, once we're here, step up here, and then this leg, which was down here, over the saddle. steps, shift weight, step down. One more time. Step on, push off, step off. Okay, so we're going to leg break. Negative resistance of legs, shift weight back. Negative resistance on pedals, shift weight back, step on push, step up. And that is how you mount and dismount on a penny falling. Until you can keep doing this kind of in a loop consecutively um, and successfully, um, seriously, do not go on any public roads. And remember, you have to really read traffic far ahead. You cannot be surprised by a vehicle on this with no brakes. You will have one hell of an accident. Um, and unless you're willing to accept the risk, um, you know, that comes with riding a penny farthing, this might not be the sport for you. Anyway, 